As President Yoon marks almost the halfway point of his term, the top office picks global pivotal state as the key phrase for his administration's foreign policy. Our Kim do Yeon has the details. 211 summits with leaders from 113 nations held by President Yoon suk yeol in the first half of his term. That's according to the presidential office on Wednesday, and as it reaches the halfway mark of its term, held a briefing on its diplomatic and national security policies. The top office says the term global pivotal state was the main theme as it established a global network to strengthen security. We approach the North Korean nuclear issue from the perspective that it poses a shared challenge, threatening peace not only on the Korean peninsula and in the surrounding region, but also impacting security across the Indo-Pacific and globally. The principal deputy national security adviser also noted economic profits from acting as a global pivotal state with soft power in action. Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy, the Korea ASEAN Solidarity Initiative and the K-Silk Road Initiative were some proposals made to help developing nations. In addition, the Korea-Pacific Island Summit and the Korea-Africa Summit were held in South Korea. The concept of being a global pivotal state is ultimately about maximizing our national interests. As a means to achieve this, solidarity and freedom has been emphasized multiple times. This is because countries that uphold liberal democracy maintain systems characterized by openness. The top office also noted that their South Korea has had a presence in multilateral scenes such as NATO and the Camp David Trilateral Summit with the U.S. and Japan. It also noted that Seoul welcomed AUKUS's invitation to cooperate on Pillar 2, which would mean cooperation for advanced technology that is transferable into military equipment. All this really also channels down to South Korea's security, especially from North Korea, sharing intelligence and getting support for Seoul's initiative to protect peace on the Korean peninsula. There was also emphasis placed on the August 15 unification doctrine, which was a declaration to unify the two Koreas under liberal democracy. We will work to prepare for a future in which our North Korean compatriots can swiftly escape poverty and the iron-fisted rule of oppression so they too can enjoy freedom. This was the second part of the presidential office's three-part plan to reach out to the public in light of its halfway mark. It followed a domestic policy briefing on Tuesday, and now the president himself will hold a live briefing on Thursday. Kim Do-yeon, Arirang News.